Um, hi. Hi. This is Alyssa Huber of Alyssa Huber Films, and these are all my peeps here. I've got um, Demi, who's also one of the Aspies in the documentary. Hi. And also Katie. Yo. Yep. And also my mom, because since she's my mom, she knows a lot about Asperger's and stuff. So, hi. About you. Huh? About you. About me, yes. But you're also, like, studying it and stuff, right? Sort of. Mm. Sort of. Psychology in general. She's a psychologist -ish. She's on her way there. Okay, so since, let's see, um, one interesting thing that my mom brought up is um, concerning whether neurotypicals should change the the world for people with Asperger's, mm. and that honestly, honestly, it doesn't sound possible. <laughs> but what if it was? What if it was? Well, then it'd be great for us, but kind of sucky for neurotypicals because then it would probably be, you know, a whole bunch of Aspies like in Dreamland, and they could do whatever they want, and they can like they can stay in their rooms and. Is that and Dreamland? Dream, not not Kirby Dreamland, yeah. Um, but. Like, you know, you like, be absorbed into all their hobbies and stuff, and the neurotypicals will be going crazy because they're like, we need to socialize, we need to socialize, we need to socialize. Or do something else. Well, to be perfectly honest, not all Aspies um, stay to themselves a lot. I mean, true, I'm mostly forced to by the fact that my job entails it, but I rather enjoy um, what my job entails. Talking to people a lot. True. I'm a bagger. I can decide to talk to him or not. So most of the time I do. I guess that's true. I kind of sort of made a generalization. I accidentally do that a lot. So <laughs> that's, it's okay. It's okay. You said that people wouldn't change, right? Right? What do you, What do you mean? Well, they wouldn't change the world for people with Asperger's, right? Yeah. Well, if If they could, if there were things that would make it easier, what could we do? Okay, so like little adjustments, not like turn it into Aspie Planet. Right. Uh, yeah, okay, I see what you mean now. Um, well, I guess for me, the first thing would, would be, um, something that would actually be kind of hard, try and figure out when a kid is literally making a statement and not coming up with an excuse. I'm confused. Okay, um, something that... I never really had to deal with much, but one thing that I notice when I try and explain my Asperger's is a lot of things I try and explain about it sounds like I'm trying to come up with a lame excuse. Oh, I, I get that. Uh, I get the same. Yeah, so basically you're kind of saying, like, you want people to understand it as you have a legitimate reason rather than it's an excuse. Yeah. Okay. I just try to let people know that I'm trying to get it off as a message instead of an excuse. Hmm. Yeah. I know, I'm just not sure that everybody gets it, you know. Yeah, I've had people claim that I'm just making up excuses. It's mostly those that refuse to accept that Asperger's exists. Yeah, that's the funny part, isn't it? Like, a lot of people, like, there are actually people out there who refuse to accept that there's a legitimate reason for why some people just act the way they do. Yeah. So then, if there was something, well, well, I guess, in a way, we're already kind of changing this aspect of it, like, the awareness part with the documentary thing, so we're kind of already working on that part, but, like, Let's think if there's anything else, like, um... Well, I guess one way of doing it, it would be to make it a little less expensive to get testing for it. Oh, there you go. Because, like, without, like, a diagnosis, you can't get accommodations or anything like that. Would be hard to, at least. Yeah. Hey, Mom, why does it cost so much to get a diagnosis, do you know? Because psychologists like me charge a lot of money. <laughs> I'm actually not a psychologist yet. Is that the actual reason? 
Well, <laughs> they charge a lot of money, but why do they charge a lot of money? <laughs> because it, it takes a long time. Like a, the assessment itself might only take an hour, but then you have to analyze um, everything, all the um, testing that you did, and then you have to interpret the testing, and that takes time. Oh, okay. Ah. And you need to eat in that time. Hmm? Yeah. And pay the bills. <laughs> right. I was actually pretty lucky with the fact that I, with my testing, because I literally have a rich uncle. <laughs> I'm oh. not joking, I have a rich uncle. And he helped to um, pay for some of it. Or was that my grandma and grandpa? I forget who. Sometimes, sometimes money comes from one direction, sometimes it comes from another. I think it came from my grandma and grandpa this time. How did the well, diagnosis help you, though? Well, my um, payments really came from... It was my grandfather, whom I called Papa, but he died a year and a half ago, and now it's just my grandma who pays for it. Did it help you to have a diagnosis? Yes. Yes, it did. Why? Well, well pretty much we knew that there was a situation going on, and I kept on getting tested and tested and psychologically, of course. Duh. Yes. <laughs> and you, it helps you understand. Yes. Well, well, all tests were saying that it was Asperger's, but due to a certain situation I had in the past, health-wise, that is, I had to get ear tubes for various reasons. Oh. They've been wanting to diagnose me as PDD NOS. Okay. What's that? Pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified. Yeah. Okay. So it's basically saying, like, we're not sure what it is, but we know it's a developmental disorder. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's still on the spectrum. It's like, they, don't, they, don't, they didn't pinpoint it. Does that make sense? Okay. okay. Yeah, okay. Well, anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. We know how much schools hate those, and I went to... Elgin Academy since I was in kindergarten. I was in my high school years by that time. Okay. It's a preschool through 12th grade school, so I've been there the entire uh, time for both elementary, middle, and upper. Long we time. Call, yeah, long time. Long, long time. Anyway, as I was saying, we were sick and tired of people actually saying it was just PDD NOS and that and everything was pointing to Asperger's, so my mother actually had to dig out the medical info and declaring that I had to have ear tubes, and she's like, see, see, we have proof. <laughs> so I was finally diagnosed with Asperger's. Yep. It's been a long time, though, right? <laughs> I was 16. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, I was 12 when I was diagnosed, and Katie was diagnosed even later, like... When was it? Like 19 or 20? I don't remember. Somewhere around there. Huh? Yeah. It's pretty recent. Yeah, it was pretty nice to know that I wasn't crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Like, I remember you telling me that. Like, it's just a huge relief. Wait, what do you mean by crazy? Uh... You know how when you don't know what you're dealing with, you think it's you not being right? Mm, I guess you could say such. Um, let's just say when I don't know what... It, when I don't know that it was an actual, pro, uh, an actual realistic problem and not me, I thought that I was... Screwed up, messed up, I guess you could say. Makes sense. So it's good to know that's, like, not your fault. That, like, that you're how you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain now because it was mostly psychological beat-up, but... Uh, understandable. So, I'm trying to think of some other ways that, like... I guess neurotypicals could make life easier for Aspies. Um, 
I mean, honestly, I think the biggest thing is just them knowing what it is and knowing, like, you know, we're not making excuses. This is how we are. Just accept the fact that we're different. Um, no, I cannot do. No, I cannot do math without a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> I will try, I like but it will take a but it will take a freaking half a day. You hate math. Hmm? You hate math. I, I hate like calculators. I like calculators because then it's less work for me when I'm doing math if I have to do math. You know, sometimes calculators are required, especially these days. True. Yes. I use calculator on my phone for like adding up my budget for the month. Both up uh, calculators, both that have a good side and a bad side. <laughs> oh yeah. What's the well, what's the bad side of the calculators? It makes people who don't have Asperger's rather lazy with their math. True. <laughs> but either, but even those that don't have Asperger's still have to use calculators at some point, especially with all the really hard stuff that go on. True. I know. I know. Statistics. And some Aspies are just naturally good at it, but some suck at it. I don't know. Maybe, it's a, at what, math? At math. Like, like at first I thought, like, oh, maybe other people with Asperger's are bad at math, but it's just like, no, it's just like an Alyssa thing, or it's just a Katie thing. Or uh, I'm, I'm excellent in math except geometry. Oh. And I'm excellent at geometry, but every other math I'm not good at. That's my mother! <laughs> I'm only just starting to figure out numbers, like how they, how they're relative to each other. Oh, wait, in what sense, like... It would be kind of hard to explain out loud, because for some reason it was some effed up thing that was going on in my head, but I'm only now beginning to figure out the relatively, relatively, <laughs> the relativity between various numbers when doing multi multiplication, subtractions, sometimes even just pluses and minuses. Oh, okay. Interactions, I guess you could say. Yeah. I still use calculators and count on my fingers. Ah, <laughs> uh, same here. Yeah. 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 You know, for the longest time when I was a kid, I, I literally thought that you had to count every single number, not round. <laughs> That's all count to one million! <laughs> I think I can actually do that. It takes a while, though. Yeah! I should, you know, I'm going to Google that. How long does it take to count to one million? <laughs> How long does it take to count to one million? Totally off topic, but I did hear about this one kid who was able to read one of the longest Harry Potter books in a day. That's a lot of reading. Wow. Okay, let's see. 11 days, 13 hours, 46 minutes, and 50 seconds. I don't think I want to spend 11 days straight counting. Uh, me neither. You know what the funny thing is? Someone actually took the time to do that. Really? Oh my uh, God. No, I mean, clearly the fact that they know how long it would take means that they have tried it. Well, also they could, like, estimate, because, like, if you're counting, it's like, it's the same thing, like, if you counted to 60, that's a minute. So if you count to a million... Well, there's also the factoid that some numbers take longer to say than others. True, like 2,689. But yeah. Well, 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 however they came to it. Yeah, so, hey mom, what do you think? Like, if there, because I can't come up with any other, like, context of, like, what, like, like, how neurotypicals can make things easier for us, I guess. When it would take us a long time to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, uh, what do you think about knife? I think we could try to understand what you're going through, and if, especially like for school, you could um, like not put a, a child that has sensory issues in a loud gymnasium, you know sensitive to the fact that they can't help that. That's not something, like if you think about in the real world, um, there's going to be sensory stimulus out there, stimuli out there, but you you will figure out, if kids with on the spectrum can figure out that they have issues with sensory, you can be prepared, like in certain contexts, social contexts. Yeah. Well, so actually, 
up to the individual to figure out what their limitations are so they can tell like the school or where they work or whatever what what it is. So that's a good point. You you could help the kids understand that have yeah. um asked Actually, one thing that I think would would help it may mostly in school settings but also in other places would be People who, um, like me who do not react well to loud, sudden, and penetrating noises. Oh, it'd me be, too. It'd be nice to know when the fire, when when the testing fire alarm is about to go off. <laughs> yes, warn us. Yes, time. yes, yes. <laughs> See, I don't. Th I think I'm kind of different. I've, from actually you guys, had, I don't I've actually had experience with that, and it did not end well. <laughs> oh yeah. Was, was that thing at the library? You mean? Yeah. Huh? Oh yeah. See, I don't like I don't react like that because I don't get I don't get startled easily, which is really funny because a lot of Aspies I know get startled really easily. I know. Yeah. Wait, I I've actually managed to startle you. Yeah, she did. I don't remember when or how. It was mostly you were so focused on something and I just snuck up on you. I think I was washing dishes or something. <laughs> like I'm so into washing the dishes. And then she touches me or says hello or something, and I'm like, Aah. No, me. No, me. When it comes to mine, the the fact that I have to get ear tubes probably contributes to it. Yeah. And I've been prone to ear infections. Yeah, but, the, but uh, isn't it also because your hearing's more sensitive because of that? Oh yeah. Yeah. So do you think if you were equipped with like headphones or something in case something happens, like a fire alarm goes off or like for Katie. Wait, you say that again? Sorry. Do you, have, do you have headphones or do you have something you can do like when a fire alarm goes off or uh, mostly when the fire alarm goes off, if I just know it's coming, I can brace for it. Kinda like okay, I'm the queen of analogy, so here's one. Okay. okay. If you don't, if you're sitting on a beach and a giant wave comes, wh which would you be most likely to survive better, knowing it's coming or not knowing it's coming? Knowing it's knowing coming. it's coming. But what if you get caught up in the wave already? What could you do to get out of that wave? The same, well, with the, like the same thing with like if the fire alarm's already going off. What could you do to help you like get through that? Do you well, have any to strategies. Well, mostly, um, all I've been able to do for most of my life is just, um, is just roll it out. Just okay. brace, uh, just brace for what I've got left, and just, just, pretty much just, wait. It. just wait for it to be over. That's could, all. I could you go outside? Could you put something over your ears? Could you? I'm it, um, that's where my fight or flight thing comes in. Recently, I've been having more of a fight um, I impulse because I've been trying to work on having that. Okay. But prior to it, I've had mostly flight impulses, getting out of the room, getting out of the building, leaving, or if I couldn't leave, just shutting down completely. Okay. Yeah, Sammy. I I think. Uh, oh, that's Sammy. I'm like, who's which dog? Because I know Kate, Kate, Katie, yeah. Katie's got dogs too. So I guess one thing that'd be nice would just to know that someone's there to help you out if need be. True. Very, very true. Um, like I remember you mentioning that, like it was really nice that um, Anthony knew you so well that, like, when you were, um, I don't know if you told me a specific story, but like. You mentioned at like some point like he would say like he would notice if you're in distress from some kind of sensory thing and like say like do you need to leave or something Don't like that. Don't make me cry. Aww. <laughs> He's a sweetheart. Whenever I think of that how sweet he is, it makes me want to cry because how sweet he is. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, it's it's um, nice meeting. It's nice. Sorry, go ahead. Meeting Anthony has got to be one of the greatest highlights of my life thus, thus far. Um, he what is. Do like, what do you like about him? Uh, I guess you could say the major thing is what pe a lot of people say about the people that they fall in love with. He's accepting. Okay. 
he's accepting but also willing to help me with the flaws that I have. And I would ho and I would like to believe that he sees me the same way. And um, one thing, uh, one thing, coming into adulthood that helped me out a lot was actually him asking me out to be his girlfriend because growing up I literally did not see myself as very important. I saw myself very low on the chain of importance. So him asking me out um, basically said, you are important enough to, to me to ask to be this very, very important person in my life. Aww. That's so nice. So yeah, that, that, helped with, that helped with my self-confidence quite a bit. <laughs> Understandable. It's like, I think whether it's you know romantic, like so the romantic I, so thing or not, like it's nice to have somebody who really gets you. Just someone who's willing to stand there and say, "I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to give a completely unbiased opinion and tell you that you are still a great person no matter what." Yeah, especially like what I really like because because I've kind of adapted to neurotypical society. I've learned how to like hide my emotions and stuff and control my emotions and make it seem like like I'm perfectly fine. And, like, very much okay. Can I just say hmm? sometimes that is very much not a good thing. I am just, I know that, <laughs> but that's how I kind of like survive and keep from having a bad reputation and you could say um, but like so that so as a result I'm so I'm usually pretty hard to read because I'm good at sort of hiding stuff so what's really nice though is when I have somebody who really does like kinda like they can like tell if I for instance I'm having sensory issues with like lights or something I'm unco or I'm uncomfortable with something or whatever and I think the person I've met most recently who can actually read me very, very well is my friend Matt, who is like on some of the previous live streams. So he surprises me sometimes in a good way. He like he can tell if I'm like tired or if I'm like if I need something or if I'm not feeling good or something. Can I just say one thing that I love about a good friend companion? Um, something can be going on, and you can be having a hard time, and they are willing to not ask what it is. Hmm. What Actually, I, I kind of need someone to ask what it is. I need people uh, to be really persistent. Uh, what I mean is, like, is there something private that you don't want to talk about with other people, but you want to, but you want a little bit of comfort? Hmm. Oh, you mean like somebody kind of instinctive, instinctively already knows? Eh... Uh, it's hard to explain without the situation, but um, let's just say someone who is willing to just stand by you despite not knowing what it is you're going through is very nice. That too, yeah. Uh, but what about your parents or good friends that have tried to understand, not just, like, guys? Uh, okay. Well, um, I was actually saying good friends, too. But, okay. Um, it's yeah. just that I'm a lot of... A lot of my friends happen to be guys, just so you hey. know. <laughs> Except for, well, of course, there's Dummy, there's Stormy, but, like, if I actually were to count on my fingers, like, most of my friends at least have been guys, so. Yeah, one of my best friends in my later years in, in middle school and early years in high school was a guy. In fact, we actually could have been in, in a relationship if he wasn't non-Christian. Yeah. <laughs> That must be an issue, like conflicts of beliefs. Yeah, don't bring that into relationships. Always, it usually, typically ends bad. Mm hmm. Very, very true. Like, you might think, like, oh, it, it won't be a big deal. And then, like, later on in life, it's like, nope, it's a problem. So, but yeah, like, like, just friendships and, like, family and stuff can help, but, like, you know, I'm always, like, you know, at college and stuff, so it's maybe a little different for me, so I, like, I rely more on friends. Okay, one one person who isn't a guy that I can really talk to, but this is most because she's nearly always on hand, is my sister. She is oh. a very, very good listener. 
though she talks a lot too. <laughs> That's nice. Um, we both talk about very similar things, and we have t tend to have rather similar problems, or at least understanding of our, each other's problems. So, yes, in a way, my sister is sort of a, um, oftentimes on hand, best friend. Yeah. Also, aren't both your siblings on the spectrum too? Uh, not really. Matthew is very heavily suspected, but <laughs> um, for, for the sure. most part, uh, for the most part, no. Oh, okay. Hmm. That's interesting. So what about you, Demi? Like, do you like like talk to your like, any of your family members like when you're having a hard time? Well, I do oftentimes still talk with my mother about it. And when worse comes to worse, I he do sometimes talk to my brother. But we've drifted apart over the years, mostly due to his change in beliefs. And not just Christian. It's like other conflicting opinions, right? Yeah, that's mainly the thing. He comes around to reflecting his opinion a lot, though, not often in a good way. It also isn't, um, I'm not, I keep forgetting, I probably have asked you this more than once, but is, he's not on the spectrum, right? Or No, he's not. He, there, he might, he'd actually be ADD, but as far as we know, he's not on the spectrum. Uh-huh. The one that is possibly, possibly because we don't know that is on, would be on the spectrum is my dad because I share a lot of the traits from him and they are Asperger's traits. Yeah, what's funny is when I met your dad, I kind of suspected it because he's like he's very like withdrawn and like, and then you've told me like, you know, he doesn't like hugs and things like that. So oh, he hates being touched. Yeah, someone just posted a question. Um. If you were able to change anything about yourself or the way Asperger's affects you, what would it be? For me personally, just the sensory issues because I've kind of already gotten over a lot of the social stuff. Um, for me, it had to be mostly, well, things relating to numbers, I guess. Oh, like problems with math. Yeah, like being able to do things w mathematically or just time-wise, or distance times time, and I cannot approximate how long it will take for me to get from one place to another unless I've been there like five times before. Oh, okay. Understandable. Hmm. What are you? <laughs> trying to think. I'd probably also go with the sensory issues. Yeah. For the most... Part I've kind of mostly gotten over mine. They do pop up every once in a while, but for the most part, they're pretty subtle now. Yeah, you've you've mentioned before that you thought that it has it has something to do with like focusing problems, right? Like, when, forgot exactly how you worded it. I'm trying to remember. I am desperately trying to remember, but my brain was, you know, maybe that's the thing I should ask ask me change my freaking memory to come back. <laughs> yeah, because it runs away and doesn't want to come home. I know what you mean. Usually my memory is either really good or really bad. Yeah. Depends on what you want to remember. Also, not like on a bad scale, but. <laughs> I think what you how you said it though it was like, you mentioned like you used to have more issues with, like bright lights and stuff like that, or, um, and then you kind of slowly got over it, and then you kind of realized it had to do more with, like, what you're focusing on. Because if you focus on it, it's going to make it worse, right? Well, sometimes I do feel like I think I am getting sensitivity to lights. Oh, really? I wonder if it's me rubbing off on you, and maybe you're actually, like, thinking about it, and then it, then it happens. Possibly. Sometimes that can happen. If you, like, like if you're if you're actively thinking about like oh these lights are really bright it's gonna probably make them worse as I've learned like I have to like I mean sometimes they're so intensely bright that I can't not focus on it but if I like if I look at like if I ha I'm holding a pencil or something I stare at the pencil I, f I find that it makes it less 
painful. Like, I'll look at something else. Actually, that's one other re um, way that Anthony helped me out. Because yeah. with the church I was with for a while, um, corners, um, uh, Harvest... Harvest Bible Chapel? Harvest Bible Chapel, yeah. Yeah. For, um, it was nice at first, but then they started turning off the volume on the music. Oops. And it started to get more bassy and loud and penetrating, so I really could not even stand being, being anywhere near the um, cathedral or whatever they called it. Mm-hmm. So, when my boyfriend asked me to come over to his church, I realized I was not having anywhere near as much trouble. In fact, I was enjoying myself and able to uh, sing to the praise music, which I hadn't been able to do for a while because I was having to concentrate so much on not being affected by the music. And later on, my mom made a very accurate comment in saying, you know, one reason you may not, not be being affected by the music is because you have him next to you. And so, yeah, that may be one reason why I'm enjoying the church I'm at currently. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But also, like, it, it's a smaller church, right? Actually, no, it's a bigger one. You have more places. Oh, one? That's just that the music is quieter, right? Um, yes and no. Yeah, I think it's about the same volume, but there's so many different places I can sit that are not as directly affected by the speakers. So is I'm gonna just make a guess then. Is it less bass probably? Because bass that was a problem, right? <sighs> Trying to explain this will go into a long circle that will be hard to explain. Oh, okay. I will <laughs> just say that music that affects me has a rather penetrating quality to it. Hmm. I am still to this day trying to figure out exactly what the name of that penetrating quality is, but when I do, I will certainly tell you. Okay. Because I know for me, it's it's usually bass. Like if I if I go to the there is a lot of bass involved in those situations. Huh? There is oftentimes bass involved in those situations, but I've also had situations where there's been bass music, but I have not been affected. Okay. So yeah, yeah like I said, it's kind of hard to explain. Yeah. I'm, now I'm thinking of, like, ASIN. Like, I, I don't know how I was able to go to the first year, or if it was just, like, or the first time that I went, if why, how, why I was okay the first time, and the next times it seemed too loud. I mean, maybe they really turned up the bass a lot. Because I know it's usually bass that really bothers me. You know, there could, there could be the factoid that you were just having so much, uh, have, having so much fun, or maybe you were just really excited the first time that you weren't really paying attention. Probably. Or it could have been, like, even how much, like, activity or how much uh, stimuli I was already being exposed to could be a factor. Hmm. I saw my dad. Was that dad? Hi, dad. <laughs> yeah. Hi, dad. He said good morning. You another message. Oh, yeah. What coping mechanisms do you use to get through difficulties? Uh, all of us, you mean? You're all. They're probably all different. Yeah. Um. What about you, Demi? What yeah. do you do to cope with stuff? You first. Okay, fine. I'll go first. I just like being polite. Um. Well, I think one of my biggest issues, I think, like, I'm generally a, a pretty happy person. Like, it could be, like, an icky, rainy day, and I could be having a lot of homework and stuff, but I'd still be happy. So, I think it's, usually, I'm most unhappy when I'm, like, I can't, like, have time to relax and think of, like, um, my the little world in my head, which I call Veil. Like if I don't have time to write about it or draw pictures of it or just think about it, then I'm like, I have a, I have a much harder time. So what I do to cope, like I kind of make up for it by, like in class. I know this is really bad, but like I would be in class rather than paying attention, I would sort of daydream and go off into my own little world. That's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's what I do. That's what I do when I work a lot. 
Yeah? Well, 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 your work doesn't really, like, require, like, you taking notes and, like, paying attention as much, I think. Yeah. So I think you can get away with that more. Trust me, there are people. There are people. <laughs> so do you think that the... Oh. Alyssa, do you think that, the, that um, your interests are your coping mechanism? Yeah, for the most part. Do um, you think that's for most... Most people on the spectrum? I would think so. I mean, because, like, interests and hobbies are such a big part of someone with Asperger's. Like, if there's something that they really, really like to do, they're going to do it a lot. So, like, you know, like when they get home from school, if they've had a rough day, they will probably just do what they like doing to, to help with it. I mean, there might be some more social aspects that might go to people and ask for advice or, like, just, you know, say, oh, I want a hug or something, but most aspects that I know would do what they're interested in. Okay. What about Demi or Katie? I was just about to ask you. Uh, I was just about to ask you that. Like, what, okay, what's the base of the question? What's the base of the question again? I, it's not appearing up on my, on my questions thing. Oh, um, well, my mom posted it on the chat over here, but, um, it's, like, how, how do you cope with difficult situations or just difficulties in general? Oh, I pretty much do the same thing you do, just that others include things such as, it's just, I'll, of course, do things that I like to do, and I also take naps to kind of wear it off, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Napping is wonderful. Yeah. Since I hate it when I like take a nap, I'm like, oh, this is nice, and then my alarm goes off, and I'm like, no, slap. Hours go by. Like, wait, I should be doing homework. <laughs> yeah, that same thing happens with me sometimes. Oh, boy. Yeah. What about you, Katie? Well, um, if I want to wind down from like too much. Um, stimulation it usually involves either games, videos, or internet surfing. Internet. That's me. Yeah. If, Sometimes I, if, I, if, I, if I want to have a really good day, usually the good day entails, well, not just one day, but like a few days, uh, literally just doing things like dishes or laundry and tidying up around the house and talking to my brother and sister every once in a while, talking to my family every once in a while, maybe going out with a friend like once or twice, but uh, basically just mostly by myself but with a good deal of interaction as well. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I actually find like doing, yeah, I have Furby in my hand, uh, but I find like doing dishes and laundry and stuff is like actually fun and therapeutic. Okay, that's just, I've heard something like that. <laughs> <laughs> there was something that sticks to the dishes, then it gets annoying. Oh, that's that's true. That's when that's when you take like sandpaper and no, I'm just kidding, not sandpaper. Well <laughs> those scrunchies are pretty much sandpaper. Well, yeah, you're right about that. But yeah, I was just gonna say I think there's actually a there's like a difference especially for Aspies, between having, like, having a hard time and then, like, being completely overstimulated. Like, if I'm having a hard day and, like, and I can, and I'm still comprehending things and I'm sort of okay for the most part, um, like, you know, I'll think of Veil, like, my world, I'll think of, um, you know, happy things, I'll do stuff like that, or, or I'll write, you know, I'll do more creative things, but if I'm completely overstimulated and I can't function, I would have to find another thing to do. Oh, wow, my camera went off somehow. Yeah, uh, yeah, typically when I'm overstimulated, I just, like, drown myself out in whatever is most interesting at the time. Like, uh, recently I found, um, the most, uh, recently I have found the most relaxing, um, anime that I've ever found in my entire life, which is oh. called uh, Natsume's Book of Friends or something like that. Yes! Yes! I'm reading that manga! 
I love you it. Should watch the, you should watch the anime. It's so relaxing. I w I just started on the first episode, but I like I wanted I wanted to see if there was a dub though, because I can only find the sub. Oh, um, I I can send you a link to the dub sometime. Hm? Yay! So there is a dub. Okay, I yeah. can hear yeah, so. Woo! So I would highly recommend you find the uh actually, I'll send you both the dub and a list of episodes, because to find the next season you need to know the ne the se the second name. Oh. Okay. Because they change the name each season. Alright, um, well, another post here from my mom <laughs> says, so coping mechanisms are different from a hard day and for overstimulation. Um, um, for me, yes, I don't know about you guys, like, um, um, like if I'm having a bad day, yes, um, I can trudge through it. I will be miserable, but I can trudge through it. Overstimulated, things just start to shut down. <laughs> Yeah, same here. Yeah. So what do you do if you're having a hard day? Uh, hard day in stimulation or hard day just bad day? No, if you just have a hard day, what do you do to try to get through the day? Like, what, what do you do to cope through? Cope? Um, just same question as before. Do you mean like having a bad day or? Emulation bad day. No, just a bad day. Okay, thanks. Um, bad day. Um, I guess you could say I. I don't know if this is copyright or not, but it really does depend on the day, like what's going on that's making it bad. Some days just start out bad and go bad throughout the rest of the day, just through situations. But, oh, hello. Oh, wait. All right. Yeah. Simon's here, yeah. <laughs> um, my apologies for lateness. I had no idea that it was quarter to seven. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I'm well, really bad to... about, like... Yeah, we well, have to do my please, that it's quarter to... Uh, quarter to twelve on Saturday here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Like, well, noon, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we get older earlier. Yeah. <laughs> well, right now we're working on Here's one of the ASPIs from our list of, like, internet people that, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, and the question I don't know if I made this clear, but we have, like, two different groups of ASPIs. We have, or for the documentary. I mean, we have, like, Aspies that I know in person, like Demi and Katie, and then we have some other Aspies that I only know through the internet, who I met through the, um, called the Adults with Asperger's group on Facebook, and I just post, made a post on there saying, anyone want to be in this documentary? And I got, like, a group of maybe eight or ten, and Simon happens to be one of them, so. <laughs> how are you going to... One of them who can't that? work out times. Huh? Oh, another face I'm not familiar with. That's my mom. <laughs> that's your mother. How little mom? She's in psychology, so that's why she's here. <laughs> and, well, she likes me, too, because I'm her daughter. So, um, What were you saying, though, Mom? How does that? How is that going to work out with you videoing um, 8 to 10? Like, on the Internet? Well, I mean, well, for instance, like, I know Simon lives in, where was it? New Zealand. <laughs> New Zealand. <laughs> So I'm like, hey, obviously I can't fly out to New Zealand, <laughs> so I'm like, so w my idea was that, and I made this clear when I did make the post, like, it's a requirement to have a camera of, like, a certain quality level, and then I would send in interview questions, they would answer them on camera, and then I would give them, like, a list of what to film, and they'd send it back, so then they will get to be in it, but I won't have to, like, run around filming everybody. I get to go off to New Zealand anyway. I could take plane. <laughs> I really like New Zealand though. It's really pretty. Have you ever been? No. But I've just where seen the pictures. Huh? Felicia, where are you? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. What? Where are you? I am in Elgin in Illinois in the United States. 
Okay, so Chicago's not very far. No, it's like in a few train stops. An hour? I think an hour away. Okay. You get a plane from Chicago to LA, and then a plane from LA to Auckland, which is 13 hours, and then a plane from Auckland to Parapara Umu. I'll pick you up. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been to Australia. I've never been to New Zealand. I know I shouldn't laugh at that. See, as we have places, see, as the United States has places called Dog Lick. Um, <laughs> what? What? Uh, I didn't quite get that. <laughs> Sorry, when you said the last name, us uh, Parapun Umu something. Um, I started chuckling, and I was like, no, I shouldn't chuckle at that. We have stupid-sounding na names in our country, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's para, para, umu, U-M-U. As in two lots of para, as in the front of parachute, and an umu on the end. And it has a meaning in Maori. Okay. okay wait. I just remembered that there's a place in Wales that has a super long name, and... Like, hold on, I looked it up. Hold on, how do I screen Land share? Landfill, windfill, land to you, go, go, go. Wait, what? Say it again. Landfair, windfill, land to you, go, go, go. <laughs> That's the one! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna screen share just so you see Commonly how... Commonly known as Landfair PG. There is a much longer place name here in New Zealand that... Really? Oh, cut 300 miles that way. And I haven't a clue what it is. But it makes Lampair PG look like goodbye. You know, it's like tiny. But the mud up there is like. Can you what? see my. Oh, wait. Here we go. Can you guys see my screen? Up at the top, that is how long it is. Lampair, Wimpel. <laughs> um, oh, there's more of it. It's close to Lampair, Wimpel, Lancer City, or Go, Go, Go. I've missed a bit in the middle. <laughs> Land fair wind still gorgony. <laughs> Why do you keep taking it away? I can't finish it. <laughs> oh, that's because, hold on, I need to lock it onto the screen share thing. Yeah. There we there go. Now it's locked, so when you talk about it, it's going. Gil uh, Gil Gorgony, uh, Churin Drop, Will, Lanticilio, Go, Go, Go. <laughs> I like that last part. Go, go, go. <laughs> so you have, funky. You have to be able to speak Welsh, look you. Oh, man. Me you, guys the long name. you guys over there got the long names. Over here in America, we got the places with the stupid names. So I think we're even. <laughs> what? Um... Um, I think there's a pl I forget what state it's in, but there's a place called... But there's a town called Doglick. <laughs> hey guys, I live in Dog Lake. Oh, I know that there is actually a normal Illinois. Yeah, there's a place called Normal in Illinois. That's where all the neurotypicals are. <laughs> an, an important thing. In New Zealand, there are a lot of towns where the place name begins W H. And one of the well known ones is W H. A K A T A N A. So W H A K. You now have to know that W H is pronounced F. 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 Now, how much work do you have to do to work out how you? Most people say F A K or F A K A. <laughs> Um, I'm I'm sorry. I'm still trying to get the print. I'm still trying to get the letters in the right place in my head. <laughs> okay. It, w a, it was typed out, a, a, w a I. Okay. Be right back. I have to make a bathroom run. Whoa. There's no room in this room. Like, this is how big it is. Ooh. Except my bed's, like, over here, so I have, like, an extra foot of space. 
That's right. Yeah, my room's the same size, except I got less space because it's a huge mess right now. <laughs> but what's the creature? Wait, what? You have a creature oh, in your hand. Kirby? What about Kirby? Uh, him. Oh, or he's her. a puffball marshmallow. <laughs> Perfectly honest, they never say what he is or what he's made out of. They he just exists. Okay. Um he, he in the games that he's in and T V series and comics and whatever else. There's also an anime based off of him. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, he is capable of turning into pretty much making his mouth enormous and inhaling things and then getting whatever powers that thing had. Basically, he's rogue from the X-Men, only, only a small pink thing. <laughs> okay. Well, since so I don't know rogue, rogue. <laughs> But I'll show, you, I'll show you something. What about this chap? Um, I'm having a hard time seeing it right now. What the... F oh, um, that looks interesting. Looks like one of the... Looks like, the new, new, looks like some of the interpretations of the New, new Jersey Devil. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a model of an animal called a Sinornithorus and it's the size of a young one and they were a Chinese flying dinosaur. Okay. And he was made by a friend of mine who's an Aspie and she makes lots of this sort of thing and sells them at a particular market. Uh, but yeah, he is a, that's Errol, and he's a sign ornithorus. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm yeah, it kind of reminds me of this. I will not try and look it up or find this name, because it will take too long to figure it out, but <laughs> basically there's this type of fish over in the Hawaiian Islands that has literally the world's longest name for a fish. I have returned. Yay! The world's longest oh, again. I'm gonna have to move a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> as hard as I can move. I know. Longest fish. I think I need to find the other stuff. Yeah. Huh? Well, let's, why don't you ask Simon the question? I was about to say that. I like oh, realized we had yeah. like four minutes. Oh. Okay. Uh, here okay. it is. Um, give me a second. Humble, there were a couple humble, different ones. Though. Nuku, Nuku, Apo. Nuku, Nuku, Apo. Now, this is the <laughs> name of the world's yeah. longest fish. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, a variety of trigger fish, but. Uh, so, wait, which question were you talking about? Yeah, Lord, that's what the fish looks like? Yeah, it's a reef trigger fish. Either one. Either one? Um, hmm. Let's see. The hammer, 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 hammer. <laughs> it sounds like you should really be able to get into it and drive it. <laughs> All right, hey, Simon. So there was a question posted asking if you were able to change anything about yourself or the way Asperger's affects you, what would it be? To be able to cope when things went wrong so that I didn't melt down. Mm. Which is the, the, the biggest issue for me. Um, you know, sometimes it, it's no problem. Um, but there are other times when I literally I'm a complete wreck. And what is and the, what's the difference, Simon, between the times where you completely melt down to the times where you're able to cope? 
I really haven't got a clue and I've never managed to work it out. Um, I think I think it's potentially to do with what the consequences might be. Okay. For example, a friend of mine was here a couple of days ago and on the coffee table there was an ashtray. Now he was sat in an easy chair, uncrossed his legs and uh, managed to catch the ashtray with his foot as he's uncrossed his leg so it went onto the floor, in perfect sort of boing donk onto the floor. Well the consequence is uh, 30 seconds work with a uh, vacuum cleaner. Boof, end of problem. There was an incident quite a long time ago now, admittedly, but uh, where a friend of mine was here, here, and she's leaving. Um, you may have come across her, Joanne Dakem, another Aspie. And she was leaving, and I had a rubbish bag at the end of the drive waiting for the dust people, you know, the trash man, to come and pick it up. Now, as she's backed up out, she's caught this trash bag with her car, dragged it along so it tore and all the trash ended up on the road, which is a significant clear-up job. That pushed too many buttons in one go and I was stood there on the drive just, no, 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 no. Um, at the top of my voice, chap from next door um, stuck his head out of the window to tell me to shut up because I was waking up their baby. And I was threatening to um, pour petrol on their house and set light to it. Not that I ever would, but it, you know, it, it was too much. Completely, you know, yeah. All control had gone. Yeah. Half an hour later, I was fine. Yeah. And yeah, that does sound like a lot of situations. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean the the. The woman who lives next or the other way, and this friend who actually caught the rubbish bag, they've cleared up the rubbish because I'm just stood there shaking. I I couldn't do a damn thing. Yeah. Um, so that's mostly I, situations that like where the consequences are greater that um, you would react more thing. badly to. Please do not interrupt. Please do not interrupt. Sorry. It's okay. Um, um, where were we? Um, yeah, you know, I'll drop a plate or something like that. And sometimes it won't worry me at all. Other times, ah, God, can't handle it. And I've got no idea what the difference between dropping a plate this time and dropping a plate that time actually is. Does get kind of weird, doesn't it? But yeah. There's no um, no relationship. Um. You know, it's kind of weird because sometimes when I'm trying to calm down, um, things that usually calm me down aren't, and it just frustrates me even more because the thing that usually calms me down isn't. So that it just makes it all the wor all the worse because it's not calming down when it should. <laughs> and I'm yeah, I, I, <laughs> I can understand that. Um, I mean, I'm lucky in some ways in that if somebody is um, is hugging me, I cope with that quite happily. I like it, and I know a lot of Aspies actually have a great deal of trouble with, um, if you like, personal contact. But for me, it works. It works every time. Oh yeah, I, lo I love hugs. <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's one reason why I appreciate my boyfriend so much is because I'm a very tactile person, 
And so he is very nice and allows me to hug him pretty much the entire time we're together. Aww. So he's very, so that's one reason why I'm very blessed to have him in my life. So I, I, there's one slight difference there in that um, it's your partner or it's a member of the opposite sex. If a bloke tried to hug me, that's, <laughs> that's going to quiz me to some extent. It doesn't in a lot of ways, but in fact if the guy who's doing it is gay, that worries me not one iota. But if it was a, if you're like a masculine bloke, that would I'd have the queasies out of that. I mean, I'm heterosexual, totally. Entirely yeah, heterosexual. I'm, afra I'm afraid I'm just singular. I I only look at guys. <laughs> and Sorry. I will just say it right now, gays make me, it make me nervous. Yeah. Uh, the, they just do. They I, don't, don't I, don't hate, I don't hate them. I don't hate them at all. They just make me nervous. Hmm. I can't really explain why, they just do. Understandable. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. With no disrespect, I suspect there's an age element in there. You know, I mean, I've known gay people for the last, what, 30 something years. And I've got some friends who I've known for years who are gay. Yeah. You know? I've got another friend who's transgender. They're great friends. It really is not an issue for you at all. You know? I don't want to jump in bed with them, but yeah. <laughs> I think it's a matter of like I'm just putting it out there so that people know that um, that's just not that's just not the kind of crowd I want to hang out with. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you don't have to. I'm not saying you should. I know. I just met with. Some, it's just sometimes I meet with people who seem to be convinced that everybody should have at least one gay friend, and that just drives me nuts. That's all. No, it, it, to me, that's silly because you should have as many people as friends as you want. What their sexual orientation is doesn't matter one iota. Thankfully, the friends that seem to be convinced that you have to have at least one gay friend, I don't hang out with anymore, so. I've never no, known anyone I mean, who's gay. Bisexual, maybe, but not completely gay. I don't know quite a few. They're kind of, like, 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 they're still good friends. It's just, like, because of, like, that difference, I don't, like, you know, talk about, like, my personal problems with them or anything, but I do like hanging out with them, like, I mean, they're still pretty fun. They're they're, they're different people. So, yeah. but anyway, I, um, it's like six minutes past. So, um, there weren't any other questions asked. So, I think we, this would be a good time to conclude. And Kirby wants to say goodbye to. <laughs> yeah. I like, I like uh, Alicia. I'll get my answers to you sometime in the next twenty-four hours. Okay. All right, that sounds great. I've done, I've done um, about half of them. I've got to finish off. All right, yeah, just take your time. Don't feel pressured. I mean, you have to like be on the other one, pretty much. So, all right, well, mind. thank you all for joining in the conversation. It was really fun and awesome, as usual. And it was also rather fun seeing everybody's little fidgets. <laughs> yeah, and all the, all the little side comments and side conversations. <laughs> That's yeah, the little running thing here. Yeah. I, I, I've been here for a little bit. Uh, um, this is actually the... I think I had decided before this was going to be the last live stream, but I have so much fun with these. Maybe, like... During the summer, after like, because I'm taking like a class this next month, but maybe after that's over and things scheduled clears up, I might do more of these. So do it, <laughs> do it. Um, okay, just everybody, 
have a wonderful a evening. Thought, a thought, Alicia, a thought before you go. I'm hoping you're recording me because you might well be able to take yeah. interesting segments out of these and add to the documentary. Actually, I had just thought today. It is a good idea. I might you know, do that. I, Okay, not to say anything, but I kind of assumed you're already going to be going to be doing that. So sorry. Um, I assumed that she was going to be doing that oh. um, anyway. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Okay. Who disappeared? Yeah. yeah Who disappeared? Actually. Alrighty. Oh. Come on. Huh? Okay. Someone disappeared? Alright, bye. We will pull him soon. Alright, well I'm going to end the broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alyssa, before we yeah. go, Alyssa, before bye. we go, you're going to have to get back in person later. <laughs>